So you're thinking of moving to or living in Monument, Colorado, but you're thinking, what is it gonna be like? How's that different than living in Colorado Springs? And where is it, what is it? And what are the good and the bad of living in Monument, Colorado? So Monument, Colorado is borders the north side of Colorado Springs city limits. It's the next city to the north. It is an incorporated city and there are good and bad things to being there and living there. None of which are right or wrong. Everyone has different priorities and different desires and needs. And we're gonna cover those today. I've got nine different pros and cons to living in Monument, Colorado. I usually do opposing pros and cons because they're usually related is there's usually a pro or something good and an opposing something that's related as far as a con to a lot of people. And so I cover those kind of contrast styles. So it's good to know and study those and look at those a little bit so you can get your needs met wherever you're thinking of living. And I'm gonna cover those with you right now because you don't know what you don't know. So let's go check it out. connect with people just like you every day to help them discover where to live and invest in real estate and sell property for top dollar when the time is just right. My name is Leif Jacobson. I'm an ex-cop turned realtor, also known as Safe Leif. We'll play on the name with a safety background. If you're new to this channel, subscribe so you're first to learn about Colorado real estate issues, everything consuming Colorado real estate. And my contact information is below. I'm really excited to hear from you. So reach out by text, call, or email after this video or book a calendar appointment and I will reach out to you. Whatever works best, I'm excited to speak with you. So we're covering the nine pros and cons as far as living in Monument, Colorado on the north side of Colorado Springs today. Let's get into it right now. The first pro and con of living in Monument, Colorado are low property taxes in general, as far as United States averages, but high property prices in general regarding United States averages. So the average house price in the entire United States, which is a very broad area to analyze, but the average price for a home in the United States as an average on a whole is $416,000. Average price for a home in Colorado, very specifically, is $540,000. $1,000. Average price for a home in Monument, Colorado, just on the north side of Colorado Springs, is $799,000. So it's, you're looking at 800 grand as far as a house in Monument. We're going to talk more about why that is and the rest of the pros and cons. So depending on where your price range are, depending on where you're shopping and what you're looking for, it's not cheap to buy a house in Monument, but the property taxes are cheaper. So if you are up in the eight, you know, seven, eight, nine hundred thousand dollar range as far as a house price purchase, at least you're not paying the average property tax rate in the United States, which is 1.11%. In Monument, Colorado, you're only paying 0.47% property tax. So it's, it's less than the half of the national average as far as property tax rates. So if you're in that echelon when you're looking for a house, you know, pushing a million dollars or just below in the $800,000 range, at least you're paying lower property taxes and you have all of the, pro con the pros that I'm gonna talk about from here out that are huge advantages to living in that gorgeous area right at the base of the Rocky Mountains. The second pro about living in Monument, Colorado are that there are lakes and really, really cool recreational lakes. The con in association with those is that there are no motorized boating in any of the lakes because they are smaller. None of these lakes are massive, but if you've lived in Colorado or for any significant amount of time, I moved to Colorado from the Northwest and Seattle area and the Puget Sound years ago, and where there can be thousands of lakes with a few square miles of an area. So Colorado is a little different. We have reservoirs and usually in the bigger lakes here, we're capturing drinking water, which can be scarce coming out of the Rocky Mountains because we supply several surrounding states with water. So there's plenty of water in general, but it can be scarce as far as collecting it in lakes. And some of the lakes are man-made and reservoirs here. So there are five lakes in the area, which are just fabulous for recreating. There's Monument Lake, Palmer Lake, Woodmore Lake, and two lakes in Forest Lakes, which is a neighborhood that's just on the kind of southwest side of uh, monument. So the lakes are fabulous and great for recreating. There's no motorized recreation, but you can use paddle boards, kayaks, canoes, and uh, on all of those lakes except Woodmore. Woodmore is a very specific neighborhood. This has its own lake. You actually can't use recreational devices on it, but it's wonderful to look at and wonderful to sit near. All five lakes allow fishing, which is fabulous, include Woodmore Lake, including Woodmore. You can fish on Woodmore Lake. Palmer Lake has the most trails, 
and recreational activities around it. There's a fountain in the middle. As you can see in the video, I'm gonna post here. It's gorgeous, lots of people kayaking and it gets really great recreation in the summertime. Woodmore Lake and Forest Lakes, primary for residential use. As far as the owners that surround and own property around there, uh, the other lakes are kind of public use. Uh, there are some kind of launch points for kayaks and things like that. Not a lot of, not a lot of docks and man-made structures protruding out into the lakes because again, they're smaller, but they have beautiful front range views and they're fabulous places to recreate. And in the summertime, Colorado can get a little warm. So when it's up in the, you know, 90, 95, 98 degrees in the summertime, and there's very little bodies of water in the Colorado Springs area compared to other areas of the country, it's awesome to be able to get out on a lake. So that's a huge advantage is the lakes. The third pro of living in Monument, Colorado is that there are a few large retailers, but not a ton of big box stores, and there are lots of locally owned shops. So the positive either could be a pro and con, depending on what you're looking for. So again, there's no right and wrong here. If you're looking for a smaller, quaint, you don't want to be right in the middle of Colorado Springs, locals would call it the Springs. If you don't want to be right in the Springs and you want to have more of a quaint, small town feel, Monument may be a better choice for you. So within reach, there are Walmart, Kohl's, Home Depot, and some shopping areas right by uh, Interstate 25, which is the north-south uh, freeway that runs right through Monument, Colorado. If you go south on that, that's what takes you down to Colorado Springs. Uh, there's Safeway, King Supers, a couple larger grocery stores there. But if you get into downtown Monument, it's fabulous and a whole different flavor and feel. It has that small town feel, lots of locally owned restaurants, locally owned shops. You know, there's a couple clothing stores jewelry, there's a cute little candle store, home decor, and there's a couple thrift stores. So Monument has, is a walkable small town with little cafes. Uh, Bistro 2 is one of those. You'll see that in some of the videos I'm posting here. Uh, there's a great little uh, pizza shop there and some meat sandwich shops. So it's a short drive to Colorado Springs for all, or Castle Rock up to the north for that matter. Large cities on either side that are within reach that are less than an hour away. Well, Colorado Springs is minutes away. Castle Rock is about 30 or 35 minutes to the north that have additional stores like Target, Lowe's, Hobby Lobby, TJ Maxx, and those type of stores. But those aren't populated right in Monument, especially in downtown Monument. So you can uh, commute to either of those places for those larger stores, but you have a really neat local flavor in Monument as far as just local mom and pop style cafes and little shops and stores. The other advantage to Monument is, the reference the proximity, is that it's commutable to the tech center of Denver. So it's kind of the newest area. I don't know, it's pretty far to call it a suburb of Denver, but it's commutable, meaning a half hour, 40 minutes, takes you up to the tech center on the south side of Denver. So people who don't want to be in Denver or Centennial or you know Parker right up in the kind of the South Denver area and want to have more of a rural feel and access to the recreation, some of which we're talking about, that's a huge advantage because you're commutable and you're right at the base of near Pikes Peak and the Rocky Mountains, uh, Castle Rock and the Denver area. You got to go quite a ways in order to get to the base of the mountains. They're a little more out in the plains, a little more open part of Colorado. The fourth advantage to living in Monument, Colorado, Colorado is outdoor living right out your door. You have so many outdoor and adventure activities outside. The opposing con to that would be indoor activities. Not so much. You know, it's a small town with smaller shops and stores and amenities. So when you're in midwinter and it's super cold, 5, 10, 15 degrees outside and you want to do something indoors, there are less amenities, but the good news is with that as well, kind of a good news to the con is that they're not a far drive away into Colorado Springs. There are over 20 hikes with amazing front range views for all different skill levels and physical ability levels right outside of Monument. And just south of Monument is the Air Force Academy, which has access to the public. There's lots of hiking trails, you know, dozens and dozens of miles of mountain biking and hiking trails in the Air Force Academy, which is just to the south. Uh, but you have Mount Hermon and Monument Rock, which is a great wilderness area, just west of downtown Monument. So just within a minutes from downtown Monument and getting a great sandwich at a cafe, you can be taking fabulous hikes right at the base of the Rocky Mountains. The Santa Fe Trail, which is a trail that runs you know, many, many miles, actually all across the state of Colorado with a few breaks in it here, here and there. Santa Fe Trail is about, it runs 17 miles south of Monument into Colorado Springs. 
you know, right from Palmer Lake all the way south into Colorado Springs. It's pretty level a lot of the way, and it's great for joggers and runners. A lot of, that's the bulk of the people that use the trail uh, are going north and south from Monument. So that's a neat resource there. There are two beautiful 18 hole golf courses, <laughs> King's Deer, which is a public course. You can pay to go play there. And you don't have to be a member. Anybody can go play. The Woodmore Country Club is a private golf course and you wouldn't need to be a member there to play. There are two disc golf courses in the area. The most popular is Rockin' the Rails, which is right on Palmer Lake. It's the most popular disc golf course in the area of Monument. I like disc golf myself, so I always pay attention to disc golf courses. I'm just learning to play golf, but that's uh, that's a whole other world. <laughs> disc golf is a little easier. There are several open tennis courts you know, throughout the area and in Monument for kind of general recreation or family recreation. There's a number of really cool parks. Limbach Park is a park that's just outside of downtown Monument. Uh, well, it, it's actually right on right on the southwest side of downtown Monument. And Dirty Woman Park, that's <laughs> a great name, are, is just, that's the one I was talking about that's southwest, just outside of town. Many open spaces, green, gorgeous space to enjoy family and sports and activities. There's indoor entertainment just south on 25. There's indoor skydiving, top golf, indoor inflatable park, movie cinemas, bowling center, lots of recreation activities just off of you know, Northgate and Interquest Parkways in Colorado Springs. So those are just a few minutes south if you want to do some indoor activities. There are small concert venues in Monument and large-scale events would be in Denver or Colorado Springs. However, there's one thing that is under construction called the Sunset Amphitheater, which is years and years in the making. It is touted as the most luxurious amphitheater ever built anywhere. It's going to see 8,000 people built around 92 fire pit suites. They just broke ground after many years in the making. It's just near the iFly indoor skydiving uh, area, just in the north side of Colorado Springs. It's a $40 million project that's gonna bring 50 to 60 shows a year. So basically Denver has Red Rocks, Colorado Springs is gonna have Sunset Amphitheater. So not quite the same amenities, but it's gonna be gorgeous. There's a huge developer that's putting it in. So that's a really exciting uh, development that's gonna to come to the north side of Colorado Springs. So while it's not in Monument, it's minutes away and will be fully accessible. It's gonna be a huge draw as a kind of bolstering Colorado Springs becoming that destination spot. The fifth pro and the con of living in Monument, Colorado are several school options is the good news, but only one middle school option. So it's interesting that there are five public elementary schools in Monument, two high schools, one of them is new, but only one public middle school. So there's a lot of kids from five elementary schools that converge and condense into the middle school. So it tends to be a little crowded. You know, it's the District 38, it's the Lewis Palmer School District. So that's one con is that it, everybody basically dumps from the elementary schools into one middle school and expands a little bit into the couple high schools that are available. There's also Monument Academy is a charter school with grades K through 12. There's Homeschool Enrichment Academy that offers grades K through eight and offers different activities and some enrichment activities, music, art, PE, science, and other exploratory programs. And there's also options for online school for middle and high schoolers in District 38. The sixth pro and con of Monument, Colorado is the small town feel is the pro. Some people don't like that, so I guess you could reciprocally swap these as far as a pro and con, but you need to drive to bigger city amenities are a little bit of a drive away. So I guess we've talked about that a little bit so far. Uh, there's a 4th of July celebration in Monument, Colorado. That's really fun. There's a summer car show and lots of park concerts. It's a walkable downtown with weekly summer art walk and locally owned restaurants. We talked about that a little bit. Museums, theaters, cinemas, sporting events, you know, concert venues like we were just talking about. You have to go just a ways south to Colorado Springs or lots of those, of course, up in Denver. As far as amenities, despite being a small town, there are two airports nearby. Monument doesn't have its own airport, but you can drive just under an hour to Denver, to DIA, Denver International Airport where you can fly almost anywhere or connect any basically anywhere in the world 
Colorado Springs Airport is about 40 minutes from Monument and Southwest Airlines actually just opened up a new hub in Colorado Springs Airport. It's really nice to fly out of Colorado Springs Airport versus DIA, mainly because I've never seen more than about 10 people in line for security at any day or time, night or day at the airport. So it's really refreshing versus you show up at Denver National Airport and you're with thousands and thousands of people in line at any time in my experience. So all that is to say, those are the, some of the good and bad of the small town feel of Monument. The seventh advantage of the small town flavor of Monument is doctor's office and small medical clinics, but no large hospitals but you have those nearby. So that's the disadvantages, no large hospitals. The advantage is the small local flavor of local doctors and dentists there. There's several family doctor's offices and dental offices, including Flying Horse Medical Office downtown. There are no hospitals right in town, but there are a huge hospital that was just built on the north end of Colorado Springs. It's minutes from Monument called the Centura St. Francis Hospital. So just three exits down I-25 off of Interquest Parkway is a massive state-of-the-art hospital that's in a very popular area. So you're pretty nearby for that. The eighth advantage of Monument Colorado is that it really Kind of to me, it feels like Colorado should feel. Kind of has that mountain town flavor. And with the local shops and the amenities that we've talked about in a small town, the disadvantage, I guess, alternative to that is it's a higher elevation. It's almost a thousand feet higher than downtown Colorado Springs and it gets more snow and some larger hail at times than Colorado Springs does. So there's lots of trees, there's rock outcroppings, winding roads and large properties, all near the base of Pikes Peak and the Rockies. So for outdoor recreation and the lakes we were talking about and reservoirs, there's really great recreation, but it's got that small town flavor. High elevation can be bad for breathing in the air. It's pretty thin air as far as you're pushing 8,000 feet, as far as a living elevation. And higher means more snow. You know, you get almost twice the snow compared to Colorado Springs at just a few hundred feet higher in general in the scheme of things. You get 110 inches of snow per year versus 57 inches in Colorado Springs. So there's no question that extra thousand feet, 800, 900,000 feet makes a big difference in the amount of snow that you get when it's cold winter months. The ninth pro and the final pro of living in Monument, Colorado is the train that comes through. To some people like me, I like seeing and hearing and listening to and watching trains. My kids love seeing trains and always did. So, but to a lot of people that will be a con. So the same pro can be a con to some folks. The Burlington Northern Railway train runs right through north-south, runs right through the west side of Monument, Colorado. There's about three trains per day that come through town in the busy season. They typically will not blow their horn. So it's not, they know they're coming through a residential area. If there's an emergency, if there's some exigent issue or some reason they need to, they'll blow their horn, but they're not just blaring that all the time. So generally it's the white noise sound of the train itself coming through, kind of chugging through, uh, but it's generally, I don't think it's very invasive, but people have a perception that that's gonna be a big deal and they really won't like it. But I think, and my the feedback that I receive from clients in general, most of the time, is that they don't even hear it after a while, the trains that come through, and again, they're not blaring their horn all the time. So there's lots of acreage properties that run along the track, and some folks are concerned about the noise. I don't think that's a huge concern. So there you have, Again, no right or wrong, perception-wise, the nine pros and cons of living in Monument, Colorado. There are huge advantages to living outside the city and being in kind of a suburb of Colorado Springs, of which Monument is one of them. I'm excited to be a resource for you. I'd love to hear from you. Reach out by text, call, or email after the video. My contact information is down below. I'm excited to hear from you and engage with you. There's never any pressure with me. It's all about being a resource for you. And I love that you're watching this video. I look forward to the chance of meeting you. Talk to you soon.